What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Live and Shift Dev. So today we gonna actually implement our game website using React and TypeScript. But today is we gonna do the async fetch for this game list to get all the games data and we're gonna implement a placeholder for this game card and a game list components. Also do a little bit of config extra config in our project as well that that's not going to include all this future it's going to be in the next video and if you haven't watched the previous uh, video on how to set up the project i'm going to have a link in the description below and yeah let's get started so to start with we are gonna install uh, new packages for um, async fetch and this one i'm gonna use asios and we also need React Router to implement different routes for our website. So I'm gonna start with yarn at ASEOS and React Router DOM. And we need also install the types for them as well. Okay, I just need to wait for this to finish. All right, that's all done. So this is what we have before. Um, but now I just want, I'm gonna uh, create an app folder. So for this app, I'm gonna um, basically define all the routes for our app. Right. So, first line is just we. I'm gonna just react. Uh, important React, and I'm gonna import browser router from re React router DOM, and in here I'm gonna define an app component. It's gonna return a React element right, so we have browser router defined and now I'm gonna define uh, the route for it And for our home page, uh, we only need to define slash because when we land on the website, uh, the first route is going to be our home page. And this is going to be our home. And currently, we don't have the home component yet, which we're going to do it now. So I'm close this and create a new folder for home. Actually, I'm gonna create a new folder name component, and and then I'm gonna move app and home in here, just to make things a little bit neater. Because essentially, app is also a React component and also home as well. So you know home compound home folder we just need to create this file okay we're gonna do we're gonna import react and and then I create a simple home component right now we just say home for now all 
All right, so we have a really basic component defined and then I go back to app and I'm going to import home slash home all right you're not defined components home is correspond type declarations I think this error because our TS config is not right I guess we haven't declared our base URL here The issue is here because we haven't declared the path for the um, uh, TS config to know like what is our path for our import. So here I basically just declare no modules. Okay. Now it works. So basically what the base here means is that um, where is actually this TS config uh, declare at and we need to specify these in order to specify the path. So path is basically relative to our base URL. So the path is here just a mapping um, uh, for the import relatively to base URL. So basically if we import any from the source we don't actually need to specify the source prefix anymore and we only need to define what comes after that as an absolute path because TypeScript's gonna look through our base URL and then it's append the path to it. So here CS config as current project directory and when we spec the path as source and it's gonna be slash source and then it look at our imports and see the components on home is going to append to the this to the slash source which has become slash source slash component slash home which is this file here yep we forgot to add that in previous video so now this is all good and let me come back to let me come back to our index tsx so here, I just need to import app from components slash app. So here, I just need to render the app. Right, so this is all good. It is just a placeholder for now. Now we can test it. okay okay so we got home so that's working okay moving on so we have app defined we have the home component now we start working on the list of game and if, in order to make that list of game on home page we need to do async fetch so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create a new component to handle the async um fetch so it's gonna I'm gonna score it and that component gonna be the game list so the game list is gonna fetch the data to so have the all the game data and then it's gonna use that array of data to render the game card um, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create a game list dot container so we, I want to have a container component to do async fetch and I'm going to have a render component just to take the data and actually do a rendering I want to separate this into two separate components just because I find it easier to follow even with hooks um, and that's a thing that my company follow as well you can use async fetch in your 
in, in, into and render into a single component that's fine as long as you guys are consistent and your code is easy to read but if just fine separate async and any side effects to a container component make things a little bit easier Right, so in this so in this gimless render I'll just do important react and then I'm gonna I'm gonna have a prop errors in games. Games basically is just a list of game we get from the game list con game list um container component and this is from the props and it return react element. Right so now we can define uh, our props type. So right now we don't have the game type defined just yet, so we're gonna define it now. And I'm gonna make a types folder in the source, and in in this folder it's gonna contain all our global types. Okay, so I already look at the um, API and and uh, and it's got a swagger document and it's and it's have all the few def defined there with different types so it just paste it here and so for our game type gonna have these kind of properties. I'm gonna import that game slash okay so that's all good um, I'm gonna come to the API documentation later and show you where I get this game property from but essentially it just contain all of this few and I'm gonna handle the error Yep, so basically you just lay the error and if if there's no games retrieved but without any errors then we gonna say that no games available And we gonna display the list of games if the games are available. And in order to do a list view, I'm gonna use an order list and I'm gonna do GameStop map. And basically, this gonna just display uh, the game in in the card view right now we don't have the card view yet but we're gonna create a placeholder for it and I'm gonna say the props for game card component is content and that content take the game now that's all good Right, so now we're gonna make this game card component.
So for this gym car, we gonna do um i think we're gonna use a link from react router so every time you click on the card it take you to the right uh, page to display the game details but first i'm gonna just gonna do a, a report import react from react and then import the link component Rather dumb, and then I'm gonna import the game from type. Also, declare the props. Now, implement the game card component. Now, the way I declare the React component a little bit different than what people show in medium block or something normally you can declare the type for your react component you do like react.fc here that's fine however i like to type like this just to follow the traditional uh, declare type in typescript and i just find that a little bit easy for me to look at the code but both way is fine Okay. Huh. Okay, so just go here. Impose this type. Now we have all everything declared. Now we gonna get the details from the content by doing title. Title. We might need a thumbnail and a short description and a genre. Okay. And the link take to that takes us to the detail page gonna be slash game slash id. We haven't defined this route yet because we're gonna do that in the next two video or next video. But for now, we this is link that I decide to be. And come down here, just do a re return link, and our game card gonna have an image with source. thumbnail and we need to also give this uh, out text so for out text I think we just do a title and um, title I think the title basically is the name of the game and say logo so because the api doesn't return a description for the image page two let me title and we're going to display the short description as well and then the genre yeah I think that's pretty much it for the game card okay so we have a simple game card so now we go back here and we import the game card from components slash game card oh. 
okay so now this is all good now we want to implement the async fetch in the game list container we're going to import uh, our game list render here to render it first um, and we also need ACOS right just to do I think set fetch and now I'll just define definition for game list render container maybe just say like game list yeah, just like game list because it's gonna be default exports anyway now we're gonna do implementation uh, yeah do the um, implementation of async fetch by doing that we're gonna use use effect and basically when we finish the async fetch data we're gonna set the data into the, in the um, state of this game list component so i'm gonna def define the state using the use state and i'm gonna give it a game type so the state basically gonna get the data from the async fetch right and the data it got gonna be the array of games and I forgot to import the game type Go here. that's all good we also need to handle the error so for errors I'm gonna use another uh, state as well okay now we're gonna handle the async fetch uh, before uh, implement that use effect to fetch data I'm going to show you this uh, games database API that's, that is free for everyone so this is the API we're going to use and we have to go with the core support because our app going to run on local host is then you can have that's course issues so in the in order to avoid the cross origin we're going to use this rap, rapid API if you click on it then it takes you to the free to game database documentation and it's got all the endpoints available so here you need to sign up with your github and when you sign up it's going to give you the key and when once you have that key here you can make the request for example i'm going to test this endpoint and it's going to give you all the games right so basically all you need is this key so you need, just need to sign up in your github okay back to our user facts i'm gonna do acos ah where's the cancel come from acos dot get right i'm gonna do slash game And then and define a config for the ACRs. So the base URL is gonna be the um, actually just before I go to this, I'm gonna create a constants file. And in this constants file, I'm gonna define the API key. I'm gonna copy and paste my key in here. 
this is the the key for access that rapid API I'm gonna expose that to the public as well for you guys here so because I'm not sure what's the worst case if I expose this key because the data is not mine so I'm not really worried about if you guys gonna use the key to bombard the rapid API database and the host gonna be the if you go back here the host gonna be this right this is gonna be the host go back to SEOs it's gonna be HTTPS slash API host slash API so what it means is when the get request happen it's gonna append slash game at the end of slash API so basically it's gonna be free game rapid API slash API slash games and look we're gonna define the headers for the request so the header basically this so I'm gonna copy and paste that headers from this documentation to here right now one of the issues that I found with this API available is that the games API here actually fetch all the games which is like 500 games in the database and we don't have the ability to, to do a pagination uh, with the available API that's why I decide that our home page when people first land on the home page they only see the um, games that actually play on the browser and, we, and if they want to see games play on PC they can set the future uh, which you're going to implement later in the in the page to see other games that play in different platform other than browser and yes yeah, so with that we're gonna set the params in our request gonna be only for the browser when a user first land on the home page so what the params means is that it's gonna append a question mark here question mark platform equal browser and that's basically gonna make the API to return the games only for the games that supported on browser and we're gonna handle this promise for the response we're gonna set the, the data come back in our game state and if errors happen we gonna set the error we only get the message so that's all good and I only want to run this user facts on melt so I specify the um, dependency as MTRA and then we just return the game list render all right so all right well, so we export this component that looks good now we create index file so in this file I'm going to import the game list and export right so that's all good
now we come back to our now we come back to our home home component and we're gonna import game list from components slash game list this gonna return our game list component so that's all good um and now we just gonna test it Okay, we saw some errors. Can't resolve core web DOM collection iterator. Um, this I think this is have to do with Babel. Where's our Babel config? So, so what I say here is that this there's no polyfill. If it, even though we use CoreJS 3 um, I think we haven't installed CoreJS 3 just yet yeah right we haven't installed CoreJS 3 so I'm gonna install this now I'm gonna install CoreJS 3 now what's the package name for CoreJS 3 I think just CoreJS Yeah, so this is called JS3 install. And also I'm gonna make this 3.8 just to match the version that we just install. Now we'll just go back and do Yandef. Yandef again. Okay, this is no games available, which is weird. We actually got a lot of response here. How come it said no games available? <laughs> Let's go back to our code to find the bug. So it passed the games here. So all these corrects except this one. This one's not right. Right. We forget the not. Yep, so we have the response back and in next video we're gonna style this game list and with responsive desire as well but for now this is good and one thing we want to add is that we need to make the error boundary so error boundary is just like a try catch but for react so we're gonna in implement that now using hawk and this is not a component so i'm create a new folder in source call hawk you might wondering why we making hawk instead of react hooks the thing is error boundary in react is not supported yet that's why we're gonna use hawk I'm gonna delete this. Um, I'm going to make the folder name with error boundary, and in this, I'm gonna create a hawk. So this hawk gonna be really simple. with error boundary it's gonna take a wrapped component and I'm gonna say this is a component component 
type, okay, component type with a props type T. This is generic and it's gonna return a component class type T and the states I'm not sure yet, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. It's gonna return a class error battery extend component. So this is the way we did declare state for component in React. It's gonna take the props T and state. So what it means when you wrap the wrap component with with error battery, the props doesn't change except it adding, uh, except gonna add the uh, has error state in it. It's just like a decorator pattern where you extend the exist functionality of the current components with extra stuff and in here the extra stuff is the has error and this is gonna be the state as well because the return gonna be uh, component gonna be having the same props as the wraps component however it's gonna have extra uh, property in the, st in the states which is has error and in generic we need to specify this t extend i want to do the extend empty objects because we don't adding um, we're not adding any uh, additional props into the wraps components but it's gonna show me errors and you say if you want empty object i need to use a record string never which i'm gonna copy and do it here this is gonna represent empty object and in the const Structor, so props, which is type T, gonna be super props, so by default, so has error is false. This is one way to de declare the state. You can go to go like this. right you can do it like this but um i just don't like it i like to follow the traditional way to do it to declare the uh, properties in a class but again that depends on the reference and for the the error battery we have a special function called get derive uh, states from error This function is available in React's stateful components and is only for useful error handling, which is the error battery. I'm gonna, gonna return has Yep. So that's all good. And in the render, and if this dot state dot has error, if this error happened, we're gonna render the fallback UI because some, something went wrong. Maybe I'm not sure the message just yet. Then we're gonna return the wrap component with the props. So basically, these props we see whatever you pass in this wraps component. We don't even adding any additional props at all.
So we're done now with error boundary. So we're going to go back to our home and we're going to import this error boundary. So put it here. Okay, so that's it. We're all done. So in this video, you learn how to do async fetch in React, and we also create some template placeholder for uh, some of the components. And we also mentioned a little bit of React Router. So in the next video, we're gonna actually do responsive design and styling with style components. So if you liked this video, give me a like and follow the channel. Thank you so much, guys.